This video is made for adult collectors because Bumblebee seems very pissed off. Hey, we're taking a look at a deluxe Bumblebee today on my birthday. I turned 25 today. Ew. How is this a deluxe? Like, how? It's bigger than a lot of voyages from both the time and now. It's so strange. Battle Blades B is badass. Like, straight up, you need one. But is this the best Bumblebee Hasbro's ever made outside of Masterpiece? A lot of people seem to think so. But before I get into the rest of the video, quickly, I do have a Patreon. There's some exclusive videos on there. If you want to go check it out, it is linked in the description down below. So, now to the actual toy. The Camaro mode is super nice. I'm starting in car mode because I want to show you how the whole thing just unfolds. Because, like... It's normal deluxe size for back in the day in car mode. And then the robot just, pfft. anyways, there's so much detail on this. The stripes are double stacked. The grill is super detailed. The headlights and taillights are painted very well. They even painted the rims. Take that every single deluxe that's come out recently. The back on mine doesn't like to stay tabbed in. And when I try to tab it in, it unpegs the doors. It's a bit of a shame. I got this brand new, but eh. I don't keep it in car mode that often anyway. So it's not like it's a huge bother, but it is still unfortunate. I do want to address this. Bumblebees usually have problems with their clear plastic because the like top transformation always relies heavily on it. All of the plastic here is inserts. It's all inserted. And then what is painted is very minimal and they actually match the yellows very well. I'm very surprised they're able to do that. The doors can open revealing nothing. And my figure's windows have these massive sprue marks on the top of them. I don't, this pain. But it is a very nice car mode. I genuinely like the way that this car looks. However, it's not my favorite Camaro that they've used for Bumblebee. That goes to the last night. So it'll be really cool to see a last night version of Bumblebee done as well as Battle Blades. I know we're never going to get that, but that would be something that would be nice to see. How, I don't know. We haven't gotten a studio series last night bead that's a new mold, so hopefully we get a new mold one at some point. Transformation is a mix of like MPM meets traditional Bumblebee conversion. Like the back and front are separated by a stick and you transform them separately. The back does the traditional gears and leg conversion and the feet just sort of appear. The front though does a lot of what I recognize from Dark of the Moon Bumblebee with the added chest stuff and the, the forearm transformation is literally just identical other than the rotatey bits leading to a bitch in robot mode. This is a tall ass and intricate deluxe. Back in the day, I don't know how this was able to be done on just a deluxe budget. He looks imposing and pretty proportional. Arms are a bit skinny, but the rest of it is super nice. I think the big reason why the arms look super skinny is because the forearm parts are so separate from the rest of the arm because they rotate and have gimmicks in them. That just throws me off a little bit. The legs are beefy enough to work and long enough too, which is something I really noticed when looking at him next to the Dark of the Moon one. I never really figured out why the Dark of the Moon one feels so disproportionate to me. And I think it's the legs. They really what help Battle Blades stand out from the rest look wise. They just fit proportionally with the rest of his body shape. And Dark of the Moon just doesn't. The arms are gorillaed, which is a pain, but they have some nice paint on them. The silver is a nice touch and the yellow parts are actually separate pieces on the shoulders. They, they, they took the time to make those separate cast parts. The torso pulls a neat trick too with the lower grill folding up to create the shaping of his torso. I love that. Kind of wish more bumblebees did that other than just one flip out panel and calling it a day the arms have a couple of gimmicks and the blade yeah that just likes to fire whenever it wants it's very annoying but i think that has to do with it being stuck in the box with the spring compressed and all the latch and blah 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 for so long it's still a nice thing to see a video game aspect be put on a toy i wish they'd do that more the other hand folds up to become a cannon that's really cool i do wish it was gray or silver but the age of extinction voyager yeah voyager has that. They made this guy a Voyager in Takara's Age of Extinction toy line because of how tall he is. <laughs> That's so funny. He also has the battle mask gimmick, which is neat. I love when they do that, but mine likes to fall off a lot. It just falls off. It's so stiff and then I rip it off. It's a pain. Now the back isn't the cleanest. It's your typical Bumblebee roof on the back, but what makes it look a bit more messy than it should is like the calves and the where the backpack sits. It doesn't compress as much as I would like it to. Like the Dark of the Moon one compresses a lot. It sticks out, but it compresses a lot. This one just sort of lies flat on the back. Reminds me of, of like Human Alliance Jazz. It just sort of sits there and looks ugly. So even though he's an older deluxe, he still is pretty packed with stuff. He doesn't have like some things you would expect from a more modern figure, but you can still get around all that. The head is on a very expressive ball joint. I will say, because of how the ball joint's done though, it makes the neck look pretty skinny. It looks a bit strange to me. He also looks pissed off, but like you get a lot of range there. 
with that. So that's really awesome. Shoulders have a um, hinge on the inside here. This one is extremely loose. Like if I bend it down a little bit and bring the arm out, it just, yeah, it does. Oh, that, that's gonna go off a lot. It just doesn't stay in place. This one locks in place very well. You got ball jointed shoulders, bicep rotation, single jointed elbow that bends just a bit under 90 degrees and no wrist swivels. <sighs> Dark of the Moon fixed this issue. I'm glad they fixed it, but like, this is so close to perfect. All it needed was that, but they uh, they messed it up. Uh, he does have thumb and hand articulation. I'm actually not sure if it is five millimeter, like if you can, he can sort of hold it. No, he can't really hold something five millimeter. The chest, the chest, these can adjust pretty much however you want them to. You can put them up there. You can leave them down if you want. You can angle them up a slightly, but they don't peg in. So it's constantly moving around and it's really annoying. I do wish those had like a locking point. The same thing with the Dark Moon one. They, these don't, they don't really lock either. So they move a lot. Kind of wish they fixed that on this, but oh well. Now, something that surprised me greatly about this was, eh, if you move this up, he has a waist joint. Yay. I wasn't expecting that. It rotates a little bit off axis just due to how the chest pegs in, but you know, it's still nice that, that he has a waist joint. Oh, there goes the sword again. I'm just gonna show right now. This thing, like, it takes no effort. I'm not even gonna press the button. It, it just comes out. It's so, so fiddly, so annoying. Legs are on ball joints. They can go forward and back, in and out. You got thigh rotation. You have double jointed knees. However, because of the, what is this? The back of the car, it bumps into the, the uh, what is this, thigh? I can't remember my leg anatomy. It, it doesn't really go any further than that. Nothing at the ankles, but they can go forward and back and then you have a toe joint. So that's nice. You can get him into some really like elaborate poses for being such a 2009 deluxe. Wait, let's just get him in something real quick here. I love, I love this. This is like, why don't more bumblebees have this? The Age of Extinction one did it too and it was really cool. See, there you go. He's in a pose, yay. It's actually quite cool. Oh, and the doors. The doors can hinge. They do have sort of like a natural stopping point like here, and then they can go even further if you want them to. Um, I like to personally fold the wheels back. The wheels can go every which way they want. I also just noticed some really nice sculpted detail in here, but I kind of just leave them like, oh, there goes the sword again. You actual dingus, stay, there we go. I just sort of leave them like that. That's how I do the doors. It looks fine, but I do wish that they could set in a little bit further. I mean, that would have just been the icing on the cake for this, but yeah. And then the battle mask clips down, but I'm not doing that because I'm going to break it. Stop. So I definitely recommend getting this if you can find it for cheap. I found it dirt cheap sealed at a, there goes Ruby. I found it dirt cheap sealed at a convention. And that's probably the best place to go looking for one because eBay, the prices are ridiculous. It's a super fun and really intuitive deluxe bumblebee that I think you'll just get a kick out of, especially if you like movie bumblebee, you need this. But that's my look at deluxe class battle blades bumblebee. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye bye.